New Zealand uh, company Rocket Lab has a plan to redefine how we access space, allowing smaller companies to launch satellites into space at world-first low prices. Uh, now they have signed a deal with none other than NASA, putting my... $20 a doubt, um, that will let them tap into NASA's resources, personnel, facilities and equipment. Peter Beck joins me now in the studio. Peter, again, every time I see you, I have to say congratulations. Oh, thanks, Paul. How, how big for you is the NASA deal? Oh, it's relatively big. I mean, we've been working with them for a long time, but, you know, this deal really solidifies their relationship. So, so is this deal a way of them saying, you are a company, we recognise the quality, the quality of what you're doing, we can work with you and we're prepared to help you? Yeah, I think the the agreement certainly shows NASA's interest in the program, yeah, for sure. This means that you can use their launch facilities too, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, New Zealand is always going to be our, our primary launch site, but the, the ability to use, like, Cape Canaveral, for example, gives us um, the ability to launch at much lower azimuths, which means we can... we can. Oh, no, I know what all that means. Right, OK. <laughs> And I got halfway through and I think I thought, God, am I dealing with Stephen Hawking here? <laughs> um, all right, so just very quickly, because I did read all about it and it just was incomprehensible to me. <laughs> if you launch in New Zealand, you yep. can only get up to a certain thing. If you launch at Cape Canaveral, you can get to a different thing. Have I nailed it? Yep, spot on. Yep. So the thing is the equator, really. Mm. So New Zealand's just too far away from the equator to, to do equatorial kind of launches. Exactly. Yep. Tell me something I don't know. So we, we can just we can just cover more of the planet by yeah. having more launch sites around the world. Okay. Does that do something? Because one of the key things with Rocket Lab is you were trying to keep the price down to about mm. five million dollars a mm. launch. Yep. Obviously, that is going to the price will skyrocket if you're going to be launching at Cape Canaveral. Yeah, it'll be difficult to maintain those sort of price levels. But I mean, they're higher value customers that want to go to those. Right. So it means that your services are available to a much wider range of customers. Exactly. Now we can cover the whole planet. Okay. How are world things going? World domination, Paul. World domination. Oh, ultimately. That's okay. Double or quits, you will not dominate the world. <laughs> yeah. Are you worried? Because I've been talking to you about this for how many years now? I started the company in 2007. 2007, okay. And I know in the great scheme of things that's not that long, but do you sometimes worry that you are getting older and older and, <laughs> and you haven't got there yet? Not really. I mean, uh, it's it's a pretty short window. Usually it takes a nation, a government, at least two decades mm. to put something on orbit. Uh, New Zealand will be the 11th nation to, to put something on orbit when we achieve it. Uh, the rest of the, the, the nations to have done that are, are pretty much superpowers, the vast majority. So it's a freaking hard thing to do. It's mm. really, really hard. So, um, you know, this program, we've really only been running this particular launch vehicle program for two years, which is, you know, ridiculously short period of time in the context of what we're trying to achieve. Have you set a break-even point for the company? Well, I mean, we, it's not... Financially. It's, yeah, yeah. The thing, the, the thing is that it's it's not about, is there a market there, do we have customers? I mean, we're backlogged two and a half yeah, years. Yeah, we just got to build the rocket. That's Isn't all we've got to do. I mean, you have, uh, my understanding is you have upwards of 30 customers mm. who want their satellite to be on one of your rockets, and they're just in some kind of diary somewhere, are they? Yeah, in our launch manifest, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, a little bit earlier in the program, I said that I'm obviously nervous about my double or quits on the $20. <laughs> so I lost the $20 bet with you that you'd never launch a rocket. Yep. Um, you allowed me to go double or quits, which I think was generous. Um, you'll never get a rocket into orbit. Yep. I am now pretty much convinced that money's down the toilet for me <laughs> now that you've got the deal with NASA. So m my new double or quits was you'll never land on Mars. Mm. Are you happy with that? Because I'm prepared for you to set another one if that's if that's too hard for you. Well, I've got no aspirations to go to Mars. That's oh, the really? trouble, oh. Paul. So we have oh. to bet on something that I actually want to do. All right. What's a really hard thing that you want to do? Really hard. Oh. Like, almost impossible. Gosh. So there's my money on the line here. <laughs> I have, to think, I have to get back to you on that one because I have to re const right. constantly redefine what's impossible. All right, like your whole business, my money's up in the air. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all right, when's, when's, just very quickly, uh, yep. Birdlings uh, Flat near Christchurch, what's the latest on, on that? Uh, we're still going through the resource consent process. So. Is it looking good? I mean, everyone wants you to do it except a couple of greenies, some feral people. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's looking good, but it is quite a process as you, you've got to go through, as you can sure imagine. But, yeah. um, you know, it's looking good. People are working hard for us. So brilliant, it's great. brilliant. Peter, again, congratulations. Peter Beck, uh, Rocket Lab founder, and um, his close colleagues at NASA.